This is Brother Sharif with the Hour of Power. Go to Hour of Power Sharif Hamid on YouTube. Subscribe and share the channel so we can continue to lift the mind, body, and soul of our people. Before I get started, tonight is in honor of our uh, shining prince, our warrior, our ancestor, Minister Malcolm X, who his Earth Day is uh, tomorrow, uh, May 19th. So uh, today... I'm honoring him and uh, remembering uh, him for his contribution to our people. Um, Salam, uh, Brother Angelo. Tonight we're honoring Minister Malcolm X. So I'm going to start off uh, tonight's short discussion with one of the most powerful speeches and talks that I've ever heard and what inspired me to become Muslim and to become conscious. This is a, a short clip of uh, Minister Malcolm X. Uh, peace, us, Queen, I see you there. This is Minister Malcolm, and then we'll get started. Who taught you, please? Who taught you to hate the texture of your hair? Who taught you to hate the color of your skin to such extent that you bleach to get like the white man? Who taught you to hate the shape of your nose and the shape of your lips? Who taught you to hate yourself from the top of your head to the soles of your feet? Who taught you to hate your own kind? Who taught you to hate the race that you belong to? So much so that you don't want to be around each other. You know, before you come asking Mr. Muhammad, does he teach hate? You should ask who yourself, who taught you to hate being what God gave you. Minister Malcolm over 50 years ago. Is it any different? Is it any different? Here you way out in the middle of the ocean can't swim and you worried about someone that's in the bathtub and can't swim. This talk is called, called Who Taught You to Hate Yourself by Minister Malcolm over 50 years ago. What's we different? Steal, we don't gamble. We don't lie. And we don't cheat. And that also deprives the government of revenue. <laughs> because you can't get into a whiskey bottle without getting past the government seal. You can't open a deck of cards without getting past the government seal. There's a white man makes the whiskey and then puts you in jail for getting drunk. <laughs> He sells you the cards and the dice and puts you in jail when he gets you to use them. So he's against us because we fix it where he can't catch you anymore. We take the dice out of your hands and the cards out of your hands and the whiskey out of your head. The most so that was Minister Malcolm X. My connection got lost a little bit there. Um, talking about who taught you to hate yourself. Um, so that was our brother over 50 years ago, uh, speaking on things that are still relevant today in 2018. So again, this is the hour of power with brother Sharif go to hour of power, Sharif Hamid on YouTube, subscribe and share the channel so we can continue to lift the mind, body and soul of our people. Tonight we are honoring and remembering minister Malcolm X, who uh, his actual Earth Day is tomorrow, May 19th. Um, when I was coming up here in a PA, um, first, my dad was in the nation when Malcolm was alive and when the most honorable Elijah Muhammad was alive. But I just don't remember it because I was so young and my dad would travel all over from here in PA all the way up to Boston uh, in New York to hear Minister Malcolm and to hear uh, Minister, well, he wasn't Minister then, he was Louis X, which now we know is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, but I don't remember that. But my dad would tell me about his experiences with those great men. And I've told this story before, but I'm so honored by it and it shaped my life so much, I'll tell it again. So I don't remember those things and when the nation split in 1975, when 
uh, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, passed away. Um, of course, there was a split. You had W.D. Muhammad, which was one of the older sons of Elijah Muhammad. He had a different way that he saw to, uh, you know, go with the nation. He went one way to what they call Sunni or Orthodox Islam. And then, you know, you had Minister Farrakhan later on who wanted to return the teachings back to the original way that Elijah Muhammad had taught it. So the nation split. Um, so my dad didn't really know what to do. So like many, he just kind of left it alone. So once I started getting older, I just knew some things just wasn't adding up. So um, I started asking questions and um, I was trying to find my way. And I remember getting in trouble with school. And when I got in trouble in school, it wasn't really behavior problems. It was me bucking up against the system. And it was racist teachers all over, just like it is now. But it was more blatant then. And they would send me out of class all the time. Again, it really wasn't behavior problems. It was me bucking up against the system, asking questions. And when I was coming up in school, I wasn't in public school. I went to Catholic school, which made it even worse because they could just pretty much do what they wanted. But once I came to public school, I saw it was nothing different. Actually, they put me out of Catholic school. They put me out. And that's how I ended up in public school. But anyway, I had racist teachers there. And one time they sent me to the rubber room. Well, that's what we called it there. But it was internal suspension. And a guy ahead of me, he was leaving as I was coming in. And in the rubber room, if you didn't have any work sent to you by your teacher, you just had to look straight ahead. You couldn't look to the left, couldn't look to the right. And you would just sit there all day. It was almost inhumane. They're not even allowed to practice it the way they did now, the way they did then. And a guy that was leaving ahead of me, he had a book of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Of course, I really didn't remember him. I didn't know what it was. I just wanted something to do. So I start reading the book and it start talking about how black men and women were kings and queens in Africa. How we could walk down the road and pick fresh fruit from trees. We built the pyramids. We did all these great things, had kingdoms and dynasties. I never heard these things before. Because my dad kind of had drifted away from the teachings and I just don't remember that. And I was just blown away by this book of the honorable, most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And then I started doing research and started hearing about Malcolm X and started researching his speeches and some of his work. And that's what sent me on my way. But I heard about this great man, how challenges that he had in his lifetime now, he grew up with his brothers and sisters and how the Ku Klux Klan chained his dad to the railroad tracks and ran him over. And then at that time, in the early 90s, uh, our good brother Spike Lee was working on the movie of Malcolm X. And that really put it into perspective. That came out in 91 or 92, I believe, um, Spike Lee's uh you know, movie with Malcolm X. And when I saw that, that really sent me on my way. So it was a lot of things going on at that time. But seeing that movie and of course, our good brother Denzel Washington, which he did one of the greatest movies, if not the greatest movies uh, of all time when he played the role of Malcolm X. And that really put things into perspective for me. But I was already studying and listening to some tapes and doing some research at that time. And at that time, if you remember, I believe it was around 92 or 93, the movie A Menace to Society came out. Now, a lot of people, especially people my age, they were uh, infatuated and caught up with all the shooting and the gangs and the gangster stuff. But that isn't what caught my eye in that movie. If you remember in that movie, it was a Muslim brother, a conscious brother in that movie uh, named Sharif. That is where I got my Muslim name from, from Sharif, from the brother from Menace to Society. That's where I got my name from because I wasn't born Muslim and I wasn't born with this name. All right. My government name was Eric. Right. But when I saw that movie and I saw how conscious and how different he was, I said, if I was ever to become Muslim, I want that name. So if you remember the the Muslim brother in that movie, he used to have his hoodie on and his dad was uh, the rock, um, not the rock, the wrestler, 
that uh, I for, that, uh, I think I forget his name, something Dunstan, but he always played a conscious role in the movies there. Um, and he was his dad. And I said, if I was ever to become Muslim, I like that name. So my mentors, those who helped me come into Islam, they let me pick that name. And I picked it from the Muslim brother Sharif from Menace to Society. But it was a chain reaction. First, I bought I got that book when I got in trouble, which changed my life from there. Um, I started reading about the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, started looking into uh, Malcolm X. And I've always followed Malcolm from then on. I don't need to sit here and give no long distor dissertation or speech about Malcolm X. But that is what got me started on my spiritual journey by me uh, getting in trouble in school, picking up that book of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And they're all connected from there. And then I started reading because they didn't have YouTube back then when I came into my consciousness. You had to go to the library and get a book. And I started, you know, I read the autobiography of Malcolm X, but that movie with Spike Lee, that really did it for me. And the thing that really blew my mind in that movie is when he first met the most honorable Elijah Muhammad after he got out of prison and he was on his post and he was preaching and then he met the most honorable Elijah Muhammad in person. I have seen the movie Malcolm X countless times. Every time I see that clip, it still makes me cry to today. When he met the most honorable Elijah Muhammad in person, he talked about how he, when he was in prison, just backing up a little bit, how he would write him letters. And the honorable Elijah Muhammad used to inspire him and tell him that he was going to get out and be one of his helpers. So when he first met him in person, how he was just shaken and how he was so emotional to see the man that inspired him to believe in him when no one else believed in him and gave him the inspiration that he needed to become the man who he was when he first met him in person. That is still bone chilling to me still to this day. And I've seen that movie countless times. But our brother Malcolm X, what a brave brother. What? A brave brother he was to come out of prison to get himself together to read the whole dictionary against all odds after all he had been through taking drugs on drugs running women even running white women he believed it I mean he admitted it and for him to come out and be the shining prince and warrior that he was I don't got to give a long dissertation you can do this research yourself. But this brother was uh, just unreal the way he lived his life, the way he came out and the amount of people that he inspired and touched out on the streets, preaching and teaching. He really believed and he lived what he believed in. You don't got to agree with everything that he said, but go back on some of his speeches and you tell me if this man wasn't inspired by God. It was a speech he gave in 1958 talking about police brutality on how the police will beat you, knock you over your head and then charge you with assault. The same thing is going on today. Look on his just Google Malcolm X on police brutality and you see them speeches 40, 50 plus years ago, and it'd be like he's speaking today with the police brutality. Look at the, all these people calling the cops on us for almost nothing. So the man had vision and the things that he was speaking on, not just police brutality, politics. You would think that he's speaking right now, present in 2018. So it is no telling the countless people Minister Malcolm touched. He put the nation on the map. He put it on the map. He ain't do it himself, but the humbleness of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad.